with B Bad and Brandon. We are here to talk about you two incredible people. Um, for those who aren't watching, they are two very handsome and beautiful people. I'm handsome. You're beautiful. Yeah, Patrick's very beautiful. I'm just stunning. <laughs> I would agree. I would very agree. We, we do have one only official part of the whole thing, and then it's one question. And who wants to go first with the question? Yeah, she goes. She oh. goes now. <laughs> you have 21 sounds or words to describe who you are and what you do. Or words and sounds. Wait, what? You have, have... You have 21 words or sounds and sounds to describe who you are and what you do or have done. Right. So, you, like, you can just you talk about who you are. Yeah. 21 yeah. words. But okay. that's it. That's all you've got. And then, then the podcast is done. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <I want. laughs> all right. Well, I'm Christiane. Um, I'm a mom. Uh, I'm a judo Olympian. Uh, I'm now studying to be an RN. <laughs> Five words left. Uh, Four words left. That's about it. <laughs> Done. Now that you're right on 21. That was 20 win ish. Yeah. Now. There's a few weird noises in there, so I'm sure that counts. It does. Mm. We count everything. Yeah, thank you. You're no done. pressure. <laughs> what I don't you know how this tradition started. I think Johnny just came up with it and was like, yeah, this is going to be the way we start every podcast. And I was like, okay. It works good. And especially being put on the spot, it's great. It's always funny watching people get that anxiety. Like, all our <laughs> listeners know we just revel in the anxiety. And it's probably the been. easiest question, like, who are you? And yeah. then say that in 21 and all of a sudden the anxiety kicks in like, oh crap, who am I? Yeah. <laughs> Probably I don't panic. Know. 100%. All right. Sir? Oh, me. Okay. Yeah, your turn. Come on. Your sir. I'm handsome, brilliant, Ooh. fat bastard, uh, super confident, Six uh, foot. <laughs> a pit bull, um, brilliant, didn't say that before. You got five words left. Irish. And I'm Irish to death. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good 21. Actually, you're probably two of our best guests who actually stick to the 21. Yeah. Oh. Wait, do other people go under or over? Oh, both. both. Well, a bit of both. A lot of rambling yeah. or a lot of just like panic. Yeah. Because I think people, <laughs> once we say 21, they either don't hear the 21 or they just freak out and continue. Okay. So I'll go well past 21. Ed Cohen gave us the finger. That was yeah. nice. Yeah, that was um, nice. It's very to the point. And then <laughs> I think it's easy. I was like, I knew you were following me. So it was. You're like, I can't be worse. Not scary. <laughs> okay, coach, you go first. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So coach client. Yeah. Yeah. Coach athlete. Yeah. Well, yeah. Coach now we're family. Now. Yeah. Friend now. Yeah. 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 But yeah, Patty started coaching me when I was uh, t- uh, 10. 10, 10. 11. Yeah. How old are you now? <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm 33 now. So, um, but yeah, I haven't officially been competing under Patty for well, like 10, 11, 10, nine years. Um, wow. But yeah, yeah. So, I'm more shocked that you're 33. I thought you were younger. Thank you. Yeah. How old are you, Pat? 66. See, I wouldn't even believe that. No, no way. I told you, handsome bastard. Yeah, yeah like I would say maybe 55. <laughs> yeah. If someone yeah. had a gun. I'll take that. Yeah, a gun to my head. 55. I now tell all the kids that I'm a Dumbledore. I'm 165. Ah, yeah. And they believe me, yeah. especially with these ears. They go for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, they do. Those <laughs> ears have had some, they've had some action. <laughs> they have. They and really have. I didn't notice till just then. I got yeah. these from everybody. I used to fight open weight when I was a kid, which means I was a 60 kilo fighter. And then you do the open weight where the biggest guy I ever fought was a bit 185 kilos. Oh, big Luigi holy from shit. Italy. Uh, he helped this one along, this left one, uh, a fair bit. He held on to it. Beaten the, well, he just bashed it. <laughs> you like it. Did cold. you win, though? Yes. Uh, but who cares? <laughs> like all heavyweights and all those pencil necks. Yep. <laughs> and so we just strangled them out. <laughs> and he had so a little sleep. Do you like? Do sleep. you follow Harry Potter? Like you've seen the Harry oh, Potter? Oh, I love them. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Probably oh, seen God, Harry, here we all go. the Harry Potter <laughs> yeah. movies oh. two or three times and they're waiting until Grace and her son yeah. sort of falls in love with them. Then I'll happily sit and watch. Did you read the books? 
No, I never read any of the books. Oh, really? Yeah, no. The books are way better. And an athlete that I now coach, who's from Ukraine, she's Irish, yeah. or she's Australian, Ukraine, Irish. Irish, yeah. you're trying to claim uh, that. She too. read all the books, <laughs> and of course, it was all in Ukrainian when she was things, and she was the one that actually got me into the Harry Potter yeah, right. uh, movies. And, mm. and so with her, I watched them twice, Yeah, and then watched them again on my own. So. Oh, the movies are great, but the books, like, I've just finished rereading yeah, the whole that. series. They're unreal. Mm. But Star Trek. Not really. Oh, I wow. I I, I've, we watched the, I've watched the movies a little bit, yeah, like no the newer idea. ones, but I haven't watched the older. Uh, no. Rick. Yeah. Brilliant. Really? Okay, I'll do <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> Just because, like, Star I was going to say, yeah, yeah. You know, for, the, for the people listening to the podcast, you know, Pat's ears look like a cross between Dumbledore's, like, <laughs> Age of Wisdom and Voldemort's <laughs> reformed head. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. yeah. So I feel like a it's lot like of people were under- Voldemort growing on the side of your head. Yeah. <laughs> it looks good, though. It suits. Actually, I had a, a, um, a, a sort of a, a, a party uh, stunt that I used to do. The, you know, the, um, um, uh, what do they call them? The, the ears on the elves. Yeah. And I used to have a set of those that would fit on my ears because they're so stiff. Yeah. From full of all of the, the fluid inside that they fit on them. And actually, people used to think that I was a Vulcan from Star oh, Trek really? or, yeah. or an elf. <laughs> that is and to, yeah. and they were flesh colored, so they actually fit my ears yeah, really, oh, really wow. well and stayed up really stiff because the ears are, are so stiff. So, do you have issues hearing or anything? What? Yeah. <laughs> That was so well timed. You've been asked this before. Uh, not much. Yeah, right. No, he just hasn't times. heard people say yeah. that. <laughs> the better stunt with these, because I don't have any feelings in them, is oh, when yes. you go to a party, and I used to do this as a kid when I was at a party, and people see my ears and they go, how did you get those? And I said, oh, it's Irish wrestling. And nobody's ever heard of Irish wrestling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we showed them the door and I said, you you bash your head off the side of the door and whoever uh, flinches first uh, loses and they have to buy all the beers. <laughs> of course, I have no, and they wanted to challenge it. Yeah, and of yeah. course, I have no <laughs> feelings in my ears. So when I belt my head off the, the door and then it was their turn, as they were belting their head off the door, I'd slam the door off their head too <laughs> <laughs> and nearly give them a set of ears. That's <laughs> so, fucking that was my other Irish uh, party. And you got a few stuff. free drinks out of that too. I got a few free drinks out of it. <laughs> that's amazing so besides all that obviously you're a is it judo coach specifically or yeah, yeah. right you teach a little bit of sambo now too uh yeah i did sambo years ago when they were trying to get it into the moscow olympics so they yeah. came around europe and they came to ireland and the uk and uh, and i wrestled with them and beat one of their european champions oh, and we did a fair bit of that had they like that okay the because again like hey had they like that <laughs> Uh, no, not really, well. <laughs> not really well. But when they invited us, so I did a couple of stunts in samba wrestling in Russia yep. when, when they were thinking, trying to get into the Moscow Olympics. Uh, and I loved it because it's very similar to judo. Yep. Just they don't wear, they wear shorts, whereas we wear long pants. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then strangles and all the stuff that's in judo is in the samba because yep. that's where they learned it was, a, it was invented and brought into uh, from Japan into the Russian system, the military system. Ah. Yeah. And that's how I got interested. And then the, the sports sambo, which I prefer, was invented in about 1930s. Yep. And then the combat sambo, which looks more like MMA, except I think it's a bit more aggressive, came in in the late 60s. Yep, yep. Wow. And that's all, it was all based on military. It was not military stuff. sport. Yep. And then they started to make a sport out of it. Yep. It's quite big now. Yeah, I was going to say sambo is reasonably big too. Yeah. Is in, it... in all of those old Soviet. Yep. yep. Uh, ex-soviet countries now it's really really big actually some of the best ones are uh, from ukraine they beat the crap out of the russians i bet they like that yeah. 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 <laughs> i love it <laughs> and i on, on on my facebook page when i watch the sambo stuff i'll only post the stuff currently yep um where ukrainians are beating the crap out of everybody because i'm all for the ukrainians yep yeah Damn. so what was your if we go right back to the start where was your first judo experience i <laughs> I was an asshole as a kid yep. and I was fighting two or three times a day. So yep. when I heard about this judo stuff, I thought, oh, more fights. So I took it up <laughs> to get more fights. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, and so my first experience was the, my first introduction to it where we were doing judo was up on the stage. Yep. And then my coach who lived next door to me, as it turns out at the time, uh, he put me wrestling one of the guys who he ended up being best mates with yep. uh, in the end. But I picked the guy up and I threw him off the stage and I broke his collarbones. Oh, oops. <laughs> so, both. You broke both? Yeah, both. Oh, good. Yeah, so 
uh, yep. that was yeah. the introduction to judo. How many points do you get for that? Uh, well, I got kicked out for a couple oh, you, of weeks. You, you had a DQ. I had to have a stern talk to you. That's amazing. So that was my introduction to judo. Yep. But there was rules in judo and not in, in, the, in, street. in the streets. <laughs> Where I lived in Dublin was pretty aggressive. Yep. And so this is more of like an outlet for you to keep you off the street in a sense? Or no, was... I just want to get more fights. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I just liked it. Yeah. I liked fighting. <laughs> you know, but it yeah. found me regard. I never started a fight. I yep. will come to that, but yep. I never, I never, <laughs> I I never ran away. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Well, you didn't throw the first punch, but you were like under your breath. Like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't throw the first punch, but it was started yeah. with words. <laughs> yes. And that's how it progressed. Yeah, I love it. Still are. <laughs> And then when I when I finished it all and I moved this side of the world because mm. I was a New Zealand I was Irish coach for a few years, then I moved down to New Zealand. I was their national coach for ten years. Oh wow! And then I moved across here after I got divorced, and that's where I then I lived in Sydney for a year, and moved up here, and mm. that's when I met Christiane when she was ten, mm. and she was in a training session in one of the clubs over on the west of the city, and yeah. um, and then we were at a tournament, uh, a little tournament somewhere in Acacia Ridge, I think it was. And then after all the tournament was finished, we were sitting around the table having a couple of beers and people sat around the table, all the coaches, and we were saying, oh, if you were coaching anybody, who would you like to coach? And this, it went around the table until it came to me and all the guys, the coaches that were there were picking the guys. And I went, oh, I think they're okay. But I just said that little girl over there, mm. I think she has what it takes. Damn. And then after that, we met. Yep. And she came up and said, hi, I'm Christiane. Yep. I want to go to the Olympics. Yeah, wow. Okay. Let's go. So <laughs> Let's go. you knew from a very young age you wanted to go to the Olympics for judo? Um, I knew I wanted to go to the Olympics since I was walking and talking. Yeah, wow. Um, but I started in gymnastics and I think mum's got a copy of like a Barbie magazine I was in when I was like four and they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, I want to go to the Olympics for gymnastics. Yep. And then... Yeah, I kind of did a bunch of different sports and um, everything kind of started clashing. So mum took me to the PCYC and was like, pick a new sport. We've got to drop this stuff. And judo was, I think at the time, the only thing that was on a day, I didn't have other commitments. Uh, and um, for me, I just like beating up all the boys. So yep. yeah. And then I just loved it and stuck around. And yeah. Like each other. She yeah. liked beating up guys. I like beating up the guys. <laughs> <laughs> It was a connection there straight away. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So did you fall in love with judo straight away as well? Look. Yeah, pretty much. I had no idea about it until yep. I came over. Yep. Um, and I think we had my, my uncle and auntie had tried it when they were kids, but yep. just quite for a short period and mm. wasn't something I knew. But yeah, once I started, I loved it. Was it confronting for you to like a new sport at that age, being so young? No, so... Um, when I was little, I, I have ADHD, so my mum chose to not medicate me and um, instead we did a lot of sports. So I did, yeah. like, every day I had um, different sports. And I'm very competitive, so I think anything you put me in, I was going to try and win and then... Do you think that, yeah. like, having that ADHD and not going the medication route, you look back and go, it's the best thing because you were able to do, like, all these sports and your mum's approach was a bit different? Um... I have like throughout like teen years and I, as an adult chosen to be medicated. Yep. Um, when I went to uni, I made the choice to be medicated because school work. Trying is, to focus. Yeah, yeah. sports, something I'm interested in. So if it's something that catches my attention mm -hmm. and it's routine and it's, you know, you can, you kind of hyper fixate yep. on the things you love. So going to uni, it was really difficult and I needed that little bit of help. To yeah. actually get through yeah. it and to concentrate and um so i have at times chosen to be medicated but yeah i'm i think i man i i can't speak highly enough about my mum like in like everything she yeah we all know your mum yeah, yeah she's yeah, pretty yeah. fucking incredible yeah. so yeah. is pretty awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean like yeah so like she she made big choices and i i know like we've talked about it and i have some memory of my childhood and mm. i know it was a really hard decision for her because mm you know, trying to find what worked mm. for us. Yeah. Um, and as a parent, you know, it was, I'm her only child. So trying mm. to work that out on the go, like mm. how to help your kid. And it's hard to watch as a parent. So yeah, like I'm, man, I had a great childhood mm. and I, I love sport. And mm. so, yeah, I'm grateful. Yeah. It's interesting. The mother, Belinda, who's a world champion in powerlifting, 
when I first met Christiane, I was teaching mm -hmm. her in her club, and I was also then, Belinda was also taking up judo for a bit of fun. So she yep. No, 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 no. My mum started judo because we had a, a bet, right? So I'm pretty good oh. at bets. Paddy's lost a bet too. We can talk about that. <laughs> a couple so actually. Talk so when I, I started we'll judo. We'll definitely talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started judo and I think it was my second, so my second nationals. So my first nationals, I went and um, I lost the final. Some girl held my piggy tail under my back and I ended up losing. <laughs> and so my second nationals, my mum and I had a bet and I said to mum, if I win, um, will you start doing judo with me? Like I wanted mum to come and do it with yeah, me. That's and cool. My mum at the time, you wouldn't believe it, was like 40 something kilo. She was tiny and she I had could long believe that, hair and like the fake nails. Like, oh, wow. She was like, she was a little Can we get a photo? We need to dig some I'm of them photos yeah. up, please. <laughs> yeah. I can't, um, I mean, I can believe it. She has a little wood. But I need to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll have a look. We'll put but, that um, up in the gym. Yeah, so I, I said to her, if I win, I was like, I want you to come and do it with me. And mum said, she goes, she said after my first nationals and she said I was in a old age group. So I'd moved up in age groups. So I was the youngest oh, wow. and I had, she said that was like quite a big pool. And she goes, I don't think you're going to win. <laughs> she goes, I was like, yeah, all right, I've got this bet. Like, <laughs> and so I won. And so mum started doing judo like the next week. She like cut her nails off and turned up to judo. I love it. That's when I was helping her, I then I was helping her and then Belinda was doing the movement. I thought, oh shit, we got champion she's strong as an here. ox man she was as strong as an ox explosive yep. super intelligent yep uh, and you just think you know so just super the same cloth, mate. as a yeah. woman you think oh the guys are going to be chasing this woman <laughs> and i'm going oh we're in and so i'm teaching her and she had good movement picked her up yep. really quick and instead she does powerlifting yeah what a waste. <laughs> <laughs> luckily she was pretty good at that she's too, pretty good yeah, at that yeah, one yeah. as well yeah. <laughs> She is fucking, she's, she's strong, strong as shit. But it can make sense, like, obviously, cut from the same cloth you. Man, she's incredible. Like, mum, like, I'm sure I'm sure you have some idea. Mum's only been lifting for, um, so what, like, I think it's, like, eight years. Yeah, I, think. You, I don't even think it's that long. Because I think I just had Greg. Oh, no, it's 2023 now. Yeah, Ooh. we're getting old. Yeah, yeah. bloody yeah. oath. Because I, I had my son, and I kind of stopped competing. So, like, my mum, like put everything like on hold she's worked and busted her ass to give me what i've had mm. and um yeah i had my son and i think she kind of decided to start training and doing something for herself so mm. she's only been really lifting for like yeah i think it's about eight years because grade nine so yeah eight nine years yeah wow. it's not really that it turns long, out she'd be and, really um, strong she's so good <laughs> it's insanely it. strong don't tell her <laughs> and i could see that in the I'm, judo and i, I think she'll lift this, this. <laughs> yeah. into yeah. the movement yeah i thought yeah well she's probably gonna I mean, she really broke my arm once Really? Yeah. Like in a, in a grapple? Up. Because we were stubborn, right? Yeah. Uh -oh. So so she came to you judo. Were no. She came to judo. And I was still a junior and I hadn't learned any arm bars yet. And mum had only been training for a couple of months and she got me in an arm bar and I was like, You're not allowed to do that. I'm still a kid. Really, I just didn't want to tap to my mum. <laughs> and she's like, Christiane, you need to tap. I was like, I'm not tapping. I don't know how to do arm bars. And like, I swear to God, my arm was like, it, I'm was, just, on. I was, it was on. I, was like, <laughs> I just tapped and didn't, I just went and sulked. And went was, that a, was that a quiet drive home? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went straight home to bed. Like, first time she didn't have to ask me to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny <laughs> have you beat her since i think she quit when i started <laughs> she moved over here and i'm not coming to powerlifting so we, we yes. just went different yes. routes <laughs> good for the, the family dynamic yeah 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 well uh i'm sure you'll come to powerlifting when you're retired. and then that means yeah you'll gravitate to powerlifting at some yeah. point in time it, it when she retires and it's not mother versus daughter like oh, we're oh, very yeah. competitive in our house <laughs> Oh, oh, that'd be yeah. such a tense household dinner, like a Sunday dinner. You'd be like, would you win this week? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I did this. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. And did you compete straight away in judo as a junior? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I started straight away. That's, yeah. Well, the, uh, Pat's decision to get you, oh, you'd already competed so, yeah, before I you met Pat? yeah, I started at PCYC. I think I'd been training for about 12 months before we met. Okay. Or maybe, maybe not even. I can't remember, but mm. it was, I'd, I'd started like within that 12 months, I mm. think before we met and then I joined the state team and Patty knew like all the guys, the state coaches. I just moved up from stuff. Sydney mm. and uh, I knew five people in Sydney and I knew five people up here. <laughs> so I thought, well, Brisbane is a bit warmer. Mm. I'll move up the company I was doing some work for asked yeah. me to move up and help run the, run the uh, 
outside of the prisons of here. So I did that. And then mm. I met them at the, at the training camp. And then, uh, so, and then at a tournament later in the year, I then seen her compete. And that's where I, I called her Rocket from the time I met her because she used to go and just beat them up in about 10 seconds. <laughs> and, uh, but one of the things I did like her about then too, which is part of the, you know, the, the values we have in judo is, is humbleness and, mm. uh, and politeness and things yep. like this. And she had that when I saw her fighting other kids who were only beginners or, or yep. lower grades. She didn't beat them up in 10 seconds. She took her time with them. Yep. In fact, we used to get penalties for not trying to throw them yep. uh, 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 too fast. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I liked the humbleness that that she had and the politeness yep. of that. And then when she wrote against people who are supposedly the same grade or better than her, she yep. just beat them up 10 seconds. And, Smashed them. and I said, oh, pocket rocket. <laughs> and so the the, nick, the, the nicknames uh, yeah, rocket. stuck. Yep. Wow. <clears throat> and then since then, how was it like, how long between you started judo and working with Pat to then, because you have competed at the Olympics? Yeah, so I was 18, so... When you were at the Olympics? Yeah. Holy. Yeah, Yeah, she qualified when she was 17. Wow. She was actually the youngest so far, I think, think, uh, qualifying for the Olympics in judo. For Australia. For Australia. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. And then you weren't able to go when you were 17? Yeah, no, like, because I qualified the year before. So you get, you do, like, the 12 months prior, you Mm. have your qualifications, like, all of your points and everything. And then once you get selected, you get put on a team and you go and travel in the lead up to the games. Um. Yeah, so I, my birthday's at the start of the year, so I'd qualified the year before and then was 18 yeah. by the so time. So you're, you're juggling the dynamic of high school and everything else of being a teenager whilst trying to yeah. compete at the highest I, of levels. Again, having a pretty cool mum, yep. um, we kind of had that conversation. Um, so I would have graduated high school the year of my qualifications. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, like with school um, – it was interesting. I had a conversation with the principal when I started at the school and um, he said to me, you know, you're only ever one injury away from um, the end of your career. So what's your backup plan? (laughs) And so, um, yeah, I I would have been graduating the year of all of the qualifications and school was getting harder and they were like offering to give me homework to take away. And like, Mm. I wasn't working. And so mum and I sat down and had a conversation and she's like, what's your backup plan? And so I went and did my cert three and four in fitness um, and was just working in a gym. Um, So I dropped out year 11, went and worked in a gym and did stuff so that I could focus on the judo. Yeah. And what do you, you went to uni as well? I'm at uni now, so I'm doing my RN. So I've got three months and I'll be graduated. Thank God. And how that would have been tough, especially balancing with the young fella. Yes, I've got two kids, and uh, yes, it's interesting. How old is So my son's nine, and my daughter's three. Daughter, yeah, yeah, and she makes up for about four children. So <laughs> yeah, we get a trait in your family with women: <laughs> strong personalities. <laughs> oh, and the little one Finn is yeah. as bad as the mum. <laughs> no, she's worse. Crazy she's as worse. the mum, aggressive, explosive. You're just like perfect judo. Yeah, yeah, man. Perfect. Yeah. If I uh, don't croak it between now and the time she's about 10 or 12, yep. I'm in. <laughs> oh, wow. Another and, Olympian on the and, rise. Yeah. And your two are following, they're doing judo as well? Um, so my son's actually um, going to start doing some boxing oh, cool. um, with my stepbrother. So yep. he's pretty decent boxer so yep. um they're gonna start doing some boxing together gray's a little, gray's very different he's quite shy yep. and a little bit timid so he's gonna do some one-on-one stuff with him and finley does swimming and gymnastics yep. so yep but she loves fighting i just we're just taking our time because yeah. she's a little bit feral <laughs> <laughs> yeah making sure she doesn't have yeah. too many skills just yeah, yet. <laughs> yeah 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 that's true yeah yeah we need to slow this process down love you got another seven years before pat can coach you. yeah <laughs> I was just like, I'm hoping, yeah. waiting. Yeah. So when you were trialling to make it to the Olympic squad, you obviously would have been up against a lot of older people as well. Yeah. A lot more experience. experience. Um, yeah. So there was a couple of, um, I was a bit <laughs> up in the air for a little bit Lots there. Lots of stories about that. Yeah. Ooh, shit, there were some, there was some decent was, athletes. Yeah. Uh, we used to travel, uh, when I first met her, uh, uh, flights from, Brisbane to Sydney were really expensive. Yep. So we used to drive down a lot. And funny enough, her mother had said to me, you'll be fine driving Christiane down <laughs> Wait, to Sydney. She'll talk you, talk the legs off a donkey. 
No, we were five minutes in the car when she would fall asleep and open her mouth and catch flies. <laughs> so I drove from Brisbane to Sydney by myself while she just ate. Well, Funny enough, she training. had this antennae <laughs> that as soon as we pulled in somewhere to eat, she'd be awake, awake and ready. And then as soon as we leave and get back into the car. <laughs> it's recovery, <laughs> sleepy, yeah. get ready for training. <laughs> so we were in Sydney Open uh, uh, in, in one of the Opens that they had. And uh, I can't remember exactly the year, but... Um, so she fought her, her weight category and and won. Yep. And I put her into a slightly older weight category to get a challenge because there, there wasn't much of a challenge in her in her real age group. Yep. And then behind my back, she puts herself in the open. Oh really? <laughs> but didn't tell me. So these are people who are 100 kilos or 80 kilos yep. or everyone. Things. She was only 52 kilos or thereabouts Holy at the sh- time. So she put herself in, and and so I'm sitting down talking to people, and then. Out comes her name on the announcer to fight in round one of whatever. And I'm like, what, what the hell are you talking about? It's already done and dusted. She fought in the open. Anyway, she beat the crap out of everybody and uh, and beat the big girl who's 105 kilos, I remember, Whoa. Simone at the time. Wow. And I just shrugged and went, I have no real control on this, do I? <laughs> There's a point as a coach where you just go, I may have driven oh. down, but she's taken the wheel. Well, yeah. She did on that occasion. Yeah. So yep. she wanted the challenge. And look, I struggled for years because she won everything all the time. And I was trying to find tournaments where she would lose so mm. that you could get the the information about, about losing. Yep. Yeah. And um, cause it, that's a real important part. And it, it actually took me, she was were you 14 or 15 when I took her eventually to Germany mm. to yeah, an wow. A-grade tournament in Germany. And it was actually... Uh, what they call a junior women's. So she's only a cadet under 17, yep. but we're fighting this tournament that's under 21s. Oh, wow. And that's, yeah, all my mates from the UK and I'm from Poland and, and places like this, yep. uh, we're all saying, oh, what are you doing here with this? She's she's only a kid. And I go, well, this is all we could get in her school yep. holiday time. And I went, oh, okay, this is going to be a tough tournament. 800 kids, that's all. There's only wow. 800 competitors Shit. in the thing. It was huge. And... Um, and then, of course, she goes out and she wins lots of fights and <laughs> lost to one of the best girls in the UK and lost to was it the Japanese. I think they lost to the Japanese. Uh, so came seventh in this tournament. Yep. That's for seventh. under yep, 21. Fifth. Right? Yep, fifth. Ah! Oh. Sorry, I lost fifth. the bronze. Yes, that's, oh. no, that's correct. And I actually have photographs back home in, wow. of, uh, yep. of that too. Uh, and then there was a training camp. I, really, I brought her for the training camp more than anything. Yep. And then in the training camp, there was more like 1,500 kids or people, some Olympians and yep. things of this who came because it's it was so strong and so big. It was huge. So, yep. uh, And that's when she lost. That was the first time I'd taken her to New Zealand and other places, American Samoa, and yep. up to, up to uh, New Caledonia, yep. uh, wow. all to try and find and get her to mix with these new kids. And yep. it was all... Uh, I, I did plan it on an annual planner uh, in, in the stages of her development so yep. that it was the right stuff so that unlike her school thinking that she'd only get injured and I don't think mm. she didn't she did get injured but not much yep. uh, not major uh, things yes. uh, and yes yeah, so it took me until she was 15 or 16 to, to get, get her to Germany yeah. and so that she would lose and go oh I actually have to train now but we yeah. did we had some like Patty has like a lot of experience mm. coaching so I think you know, like, because I identified, like, quite early that I wanted to go somewhere. Mm. Um, you know, like, even I think it was the 2000 Olympics or, no, one, like, one of the very early ones and I was only quite young, Patty took me down to be a training partner for all of the girls that were going to the Olympics. Wow, wow. So, like, the two Olympics prior to the ones that I was actually going to be eligible for, I went down. So, the very mm. first one, Patty took me down, like, he paid for it and we stayed in, like, a couple of other kids from um mm. Samoa I think some mm. of the islanders we all just stayed in a little cabin outside and we used to walk in the back way wow. into, yeah. and we were like the training partners for the Olympians going wow. and then the Olympics before mine I actually got invited to come down and be um training partner, a training yeah. partner yep. um so I would only have been 14 um <laughs> at that insane. point and then that yeah it was my part time. of your pen plan yeah, yeah I, I to expose her to that before she had because when, when I first moved up here it was 2000 um, I knew that, of course, then 2004 uh, was going to be too early. And then I was thinking, well, 2008 would be things. She was a bit young. I was still thinking yeah. about maybe the Olympics after that. Is that London, 2012? Uh, um, London was 2012. Yeah. yeah. Um, so 2008 then was 
Beijing. was in Beijing, and That's then 2004 right. was in Athens. Mm. Yes. So I'm calculating out, well, this is 2000, 2004, she's only 14, 15, mm. too young. And we changed uh, weight classes like about a year that. and a half yeah. before the Olympics too because yeah. I was um, – I, we always thought I was going to be a bit taller than yeah. I ended up being. <laughs> oh. um, so we, like I started in a heavier weight class thinking yeah. that I was going to get bigger and then yep. I just didn't get mm-hmm. any bigger. Yep. So we dropped back down to 52s um, a year and a half before the Olympics. So juggling, trying to like learn how to get my weight to sit at a comfortable weight. Yeah. Cause I was like right in the middle. Like I was walking around about 55, 56. So I was too light for the next weight class, yeah. but I was fairly lean, so cutting to 52 even from that gap was quite hard. Much there to cut. Yeah, and then you do it wrong a couple of times. My <laughs> weight started getting a bit heavy, like a bit higher, a bit higher, and by the end I was cutting from like 59, 60 Oops. kilos. Yeah, wow. 52, it wasn't, yeah, and it wasn't that fun. But you made a point before I want to touch on, and like from your perspective, obviously you've been in the industry so long, why is, import, why is, it, why is losing so important for an athlete's development? It, well, if you win... Most people, when they win, they don't then think about uh, mm. what's what's gone wrong. Because even yeah. though you win, you've actually made some mistakes mm-hmm. inside the fight, especially something as complex as, as a judo fight. But whether it's boxing mm. or tennis or whatever, you'll still see them that they've made you know some strokes wrong and the baseline strokes wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you have to think about the things that that's didn't work, even though you won the won the fight. And unfortunately, with too many people, they just go, well, I won, so I don't have to train any mm. more than I currently have. Mm, yeah. And so you need those lessons uh, for them to to understand that, that they actually have to think. And we're very complex because you've got all the throws, all the pins, mm. uh, all the arm locks, all the strangles, and then you've got gripping skills, which is very complex in, in the combat sports. And then you've got edge of the mat fighting, you've got middle of the mat fighting and tactics, So there's a whole lot of different things. And then you have to remember that some of the referees are also not the best or most skilled. And you have to make up a little bit of a a difference that they'll make a a mistake because they're human. And so you're trying to think of all of this. But you need the athlete to sit down and think, well, although I won that, I made these mistakes. And most don't. Mm -hmm. So you need a few losses for them to actually realize that, no, shit, I need to train a little bit harder Mm -hmm. and a bit more. And and, uh, things more is not always better, but... There are times when you have to do the volume of training mm-hmm. in order for the rest of it then to actually come out in the end. Yeah. And with so much complex things to to learn. And so the losses are to make them be a bit really humble think. and re- mm. rethink and realize I'm good, but I could be better. There's a couple of people who are still there yeah. knocking yeah. over. And for yourself being so young, was that a that apparent to you when you had those losses, or were you still just kind of like teenager fuck you i should have won uh no i think i um no i i'm pretty competitive i hate losing i hate Mm. losing um i don't know i sounds really arrogant i wasn't until i started moving up to seniors that i really worked out where i needed to start Mm. improving um because yeah i did get a bit complacent with winning before mm. that, that but especially horrible. like you know from what pat said i yeah. think anyone could fall into that trap if you're just winning everything yeah especially when you're going overseas yeah. you're winning everything yeah. it's not until you're 14 15 you've been training for what nearly six years at this point in the yeah. sport mm. you've had i don't know yeah. how many fights by that i point. don't think you realize like for me as well like i i'm really grateful like patty mm. when he came over taught something that a lot of other people weren't teaching here mm. and i think that that also is a massive reason why I did as well as I did Mm. Um, because Patrick loves groundwork and like that real European grappling. Mm. Um, Whereas everyone here at the time was very traditional Japanese stand up. Um, And I love like grappling. I love like groundwork. It was all stuff that worked really well for my physique as well as what I was interested in. So I fought really differently. And Mm. I also don't like training with women yeah. um so I always trained with the boys who are a bit yeah. bigger and stronger so like that obviously helped as well I just think Patrick offered something that people weren't offering at the time mm. and I it wasn't just me like a lot of the players from my club were incredible were doing really well and yeah. you know um yeah it's because he brought something that other people weren't did you have any challenges bringing that new dynamic with judo yeah. to Australia did people it's was the there a wall because it's a quite a yeah. traditional sport so I mm. imagine there'd be people that are very invested in their mm. 
tradition of doing it and then oh yeah people you. just thought that what i was teaching was crap, was crap. <laughs> yeah and then all and, their players um, are getting beat and up. that all you need to do is just <laughs> do a very japanese style but then yep. the, the problem i went through this as a kid too the, the, the stature the, the makeup of a japanese uh, uh, body is actually mm. different to ours yep. because they got short legs and long bodies we we're sort of long legs and short bodies mm. so the leverages and i i guess i really <laughs> understood this when i was doing some of my study on coaching in germany mm. Um, but when I was doing my training and, uh, in, in the UK and in France and Germany, because I lived, I was a bit of a gypsy. I lived in different countries while mm. I was trying to, to, uh, to compete internationally. And then you're learning about uh, how to use your levers properly. And mm. so that was the French in particular were very good at, at that learning that we, we changed the movement because of the length of our levers. Yeah. Um, and then that got re-emphasized much later in life when I was studying to do coaching mm. in Germany. Um, so then when I was coaching elsewhere and in particular with Christiane and, and some of the other kids that I've been helping over the years, I apply all that science and all that understanding, mm. but people here still think that Japanese judo is the only way to do it. Japanese judo is still the best in the world, but we like anything in the things, even in powerlifting, yep. if you've got short levers compared to somebody who's tall with long levers, exactly, things are a bit different. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And you can shift more <clears> weight because of the, the levers. You have to understand that. Yeah. Uh, you've got tall body, long body, and you have to really have a really good, strong lower back mm. to make up for the difference when you're doing a deadlift or mm. whatever the case would be. Same in judo. Um, yep. We have to change the levers. But the gripping is different in, in European judo. It's very, very different yeah. to Japanese. Yeah. And then the groundwork, which I just love the groundwork. And that all came from injuries where I broke my legs and broke my knees Ooh. and all sorts of things. And I realized, oh, I can't do the standing work. So I just used to wrap my, my knees up in a towel with plaster of Paris. I don't need to use that stuff anymore. Yep. And then just go wrestling. So the guys didn't like it because when I hit them on the head with my plaster of Paris, <laughs> I gave them an ear like mine. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but I learned it and, and I learned to love the judo because of the mm. groundwork because it's like a game of chess. Yeah. And then just all the stuff that you can learn. Yeah. It's just fantastic. Mm. The moves and the things. It's. Mm. But the other part is if you're good on the ground, it actually helps you standing. Yeah. Because yeah. then if yeah. you fall on the floor, you don't give a shit. Yeah. You're but good to go. going to kill you down here anyway. Yeah. Paddy told me like when I was really young, like he said, you want to be feared just as much standing as you want to be feared on the ground. Yep. Mm. And like, that was a big thing for me. And even now, like I do more MMA now than judo. It's like, it, it's, it's so true though. Like if you're, if people are afraid to go on the ground, cause they know that you're good at groundwork, they'll try and stand. Like, mm. and that was like, now it's a lot different now. Like judo's yeah. evolved a lot in Australia, but either you were really good at standing or you're really good at ground. So mm. he always, all of his athletes have always learned to be equally, yep. you know, as decent both standing mm. and on the ground and yeah so did that mean when people got to know a bit more about who you were as a fighter people like oh we, we need to watch out christian's got yeah. solid ground game we need to stay away from that when you're going up against yeah well a yeah. lot of the girls started training a bit of jujitsu or like cross training and wrestling <laughs> so that yeah there was a couple of girls that were pretty like were all right like carly renzi she did a lot of wrestling and emily they both went to com games for wrestling yep. as well oh wow um so like there was a few girls that around then were but now it's so much different now like yeah. now everyone's you know it's improved like and we used to always have like a lot of conditioning like outside of just judo as well mm. like overseas though they're like paid athletes mm. you know they live in like full-time centers they've got strength and conditioning coaches nutrition coaches yep. everything and you know here like there was nothing like that back then now yep. they've got like a small training center down in melbourne but yep. they're still, still working it out comparison. like yeah yep. and um that's yeah that's training as an athlete that did so well in the sport yeah like you know you can reflect and you know yeah, live in that space the it is what it is yeah. but yeah like yeah like patty did all of that stuff for, for me and the others at the club like all of our diet and our outside conditioning and stuff yeah. and i think knowing what i know now like obviously i think and both of us i think there's things that we would have done differently yep. but even outside like externally like i remember going to nutritionist when i was a kid so patty and i used to butt heads real bad because you tell me i cheated on my diet because i wasn't losing weight and i wouldn't talk to him for a few days because i knew i hadn't and like, <laughs> you know and he'd make me run further and i fucking hate running um and so like we did we went and found a nutritionist at one point but it was just like like sports nutrition now compared to like oh, you know, it's, it's crazy yeah. like and and like being a woman as well <laughs> like i'm it blows my mind how far it's in, it's come like mm. diets and like just all of that things for in like 
any athlete, but for mm. women in particular, mm. like just trying to go around like you month to month. And but mm. yeah, like we had diet uh, dietitians telling me to eat. Like I was eating rabbit food trying to make weight, and I just I was dying. Like Damn. I had nothing. I was crying. Let alone trying to food. perform afterwards. Yeah, as well. and I wouldn't make weight anyway. Like they mm. were like cutting my calories down to I can't remember it was something ridiculous. And then my weight was just going up because it was just storing everything and yeah. my body was just shutting down. Just stressed like, and shutting down. Yeah. Yeah. That's frustrating. Like, it's like, I, I don't know. We, we are, have come so far, yet we still got so far yeah. to go. That's yeah. the annoying part. Like, I was watching a documentary the other day. Um, I don't know if you guys follow, like, NRL or anything. I know you do. but it's, <laughs> I've heard of NRL. Yeah. Um, like, obviously, one of the boys from the Melbourne Storms going over to, like, U.S., to get rehabilitated so he can come back and play it's like why don't yeah. we have centers like this mm. like that in australia yeah. and we are still so far behind places like the us and especially yeah. european countries when it comes to strength and conditioning yeah it's just frustrating we have a lot of we have a lot of institutions government institutions as well that don't really understand mm. all of that and uh, there are a lot of things where they just pay lip service to the to what it, to, to sport yeah mm. i mean in, in all my years of doing this now at 55 years or more of doing judo and doing sports when it comes to populations so america 350 yeah. million people tax there's a lot of tax that mm. you can help sports when they when mm. to, we are 25 million people or 26 million people here so mm. you know the accumulation of funds to then yep. help the sports not as much so i i think we do really quite well i wouldn't mm. knock them too much yeah but the choices you make um, would be a bit, could be better. Yeah, the yeah. choice of make where we put programs and people who we put into the programs who get paid to do it. Mm. Some of them are just mates of mates mm. and not people who really should know be how there. to do that. Should yeah. be there. Yeah. And then you go back to when you, when you were doing it, like it, it, everything was done off your own back to, yeah. to get yeah, to like, travel locally in, interstate mm, and then internationally, yeah. I imagine, and then yeah. let alone what it's like to get get to an Olympics. Yeah, so it's... like my mom and Patty funded um, everything for me up until yeah. I was like, I think, I think it was just before I when I got shortlisted for the Olympics. And I, I'm I, this is an old memory, so I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I was the highest funded junior i think other than there was one other female that would have been above me because she's uh, won a medal at the olympics so i was the highest funded and i think i got 15 grand for 12 months and you had to like apply for everything to be paid so i had to send it to them and go this is the camp i want to go to and like you know you'd go to europe and you know an a grade training camp was like 600 euros for like yep. four days so Plus like it doesn't go very far yeah it's your flight accommodations yep. all of don't my training attire yep. strapping tape i remember like i had to send them a thing and go can i get some strapping tape and wow. so they the ais sent me some but it all came out of my out like of out budget. of my scholarship for the 12 months and <sighs> Yeah. And then do they do they pay to get you to the Olympics or do you have to pay your own way to get there as so well? So the Olympics was Olympic funded. So yep. and um yeah, so that was the like Olympic committee paid yep. for that, but everything leading up to that was like the judo mm. the Australian judo committee. Yep. So it, it makes like points more towards Paddy's point before, like considering our population and how well we do considering our limited resources, yeah. especially back yeah. then. Well I moved. I moved overseas. So um it was com- like, you know, it just got to the point it was too expensive mm. um, for me to travel. So like I went and based myself over in the UK um, for the 12 months leading up to because it was like 150 bucks and I could go to Paris and back for like, yeah, um, right. you know, as opposed to here, if I did go over, it was like two grand return flight. Yep. So I just oh, went right. and based myself over in, well, a, in a full-time center over there yep. as well. Um, and I was lucky they looked what's, after me. What's that like as a 17-year-old? Just leaving Australia all behind to go over there must have been a hell of an adventure. Well, she's a bigger, bigger story. She's been very nice. Uh, <laughs> that. We were teaching her, herself and my mother were, were, were teaching, um, my mother, her mother and myself were teaching her travel skills from the time she was 10. Mm. And so we'd go, we drove to Sydney, we drove to Sydney. But when we were flying to different, even down to Sydney or Melbourne, um, one of the things we did do, both either myself or her mother, was we would get her to book us in at the airline, at the desk. Yep. Mm. And when it came to we're going overseas, showing the passports and yep. loading the bags. And so all of the traveling skills 
uh, were, were taught from an early age, um, even to the extent of when we would go down and we'd get trains from Sydney, then Christiane had to go and find out what platform we were going or where mm. we would go. So the travel skills were really good. So by the time she was 17, um, we were we were both meant to go to Europe to do some training. I couldn't go. My couldn't get out of my business. Mm. It was I just had too much too many issues with me taking the time off I was taking, and so Christiane had to go by herself. Mm. So we'd organised that she was going to stay in a training camp in Germany where we'd gone. But I used to train him when I was a kid, and she was to go down there and train with them. And it was a great place, great big sports school in Germany, mm. and and we'd been there a, a, a year or so before. So it was all good. The problem is, is that it then changed. They had new management, new everything, and the whole experience where she, so she got herself there all the way from here to Germany in Berlin, or just outside Berlin, uh, Frankfurt, uh, uh, Frankfurt order. Yeah. And nobody knew anything because all my friends that had been managing the place were, were no longer there. They uh -oh. moved on to other things. So she managed to then meet them, uh, meet some some people in from the UK, and get herself to the UK to to train with, uh, in Camberley uh, Judo Club and uh, and train there for a very important Oceania Championships, which was a qualification tournament for the Olympic Games. Oh, wow! So yeah, being very she's been very uh, uh, modest in all of that stuff that she learned, she was able to apply. She was doing that at 17. Well, Very few people would actually be able to 100%. pick themselves up and bring themselves over to Germany, figure all that shit out. In a foreign and, uh, country. And then language. get another flight and go to the UK and then get well, to Camberley, which is not in, inside London, it's outside London. Yep. Uh, and then do all the training that they do. Uh, yeah, big admiration for... Wow. For that, the kid at the time, it was yeah. wasn't, wasn't really quite easy. amazing. <laughs> I did miss one flight, and I thought <laughs> I rang oh, mum crying at like go. midnight. Mom, oh, you, did, you didn't train <laughs> for I that. Don't have any money yeah. Left. <laughs> yeah, your you poor mum was, was she ever stressed out at any point? Yeah, that time. time I was like in the middle of nowhere, and I had no money left. It was like the last week of my training camp, and I rang mum, and it was like midnight. She's like, "Okay, okay." I'll work it out. <laughs> She's like, just don't go anywhere. Just stay there. I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I got no money. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. That experience though, like that's a lifetime worth of experience at 17 years old. Yeah. It is. But when you think about what she had to go through mm. at such a young age. Um, it's just water off the back for her. Yeah, but it shouldn't have happened. Mm. There should be a system. That's the point. There should be. Right. A, and they are the, the, the currently the, the guys who run the, what they call the NPC, the National mm -hmm. uh, Training Plan or Training Center, are trying to put systems in place so that that doesn't happen. Yep. So hats off for them to do that. Yep. But it's taken this long. I mean, she's mm. now retired, mm. nearly nine or ten years or so. Yep. Um, so it shouldn't have taken this long to get to where we're at. Yeah. Um, and then when I look back at all the things that were happening to Christiane, I'm going, well, that happened to me. That's mm. 30 odd years ago. We shouldn't be in this place now. We're in a sports crazy country. Yeah. yeah so yeah. again, not understanding planning and not understanding long, long term planning. And by sometimes when people talk to me about planning, when I plan for an athlete, I plan about 10 to 12 years in advance. Hence, I was when, I, when we go back to what we were saying earlier, when I met Christiane, she was 10. I'm going, okay, well, 2004 Olympics, mm. um, can't do that. 2008, she'd be okay for that, but really she'd be better matured for the next one. So that was a 12 year plan. Mm. She went to the 2008 Olympics. Mm. And then also part of that was the changes that they were making in the selection criteria from the International Judo Federation, who I used to work for for about 20 odd years. So I knew that they were going to change the qualification system yep. for 2012. I thought, oh, now that might change. That would change my thinking, my planning. Yep. And so I brought a few things forward mm. so that she could qualify uh, for the 2008 Olympics. So just a bit of long-term planning. And so you have to be prepared to do that. And there's still too many institutions, whether it's uh, Queensland Judo or uh, uh, other institutions, well, they don't have any planning at all or very, very little planning. Mm. And you, that doesn't help. Them. Do you think athletes are... Would, this is a very obviously blanket statement, but do you think majority of athletes don't see themselves in the sport that long to plan for that long, or do you think they're too short-sighted? Not really sure. I, I do know that really with Christiane, yeah. uh, yes, uh, uh, that was things because the strength and the enthusiasm, she's probably the most 
committed athlete than I've ever worked with. He's not normally you know? this nice. Um, really like <laughs> it's because of this thing and these yeah, things. The right? You wait till we get outside. <laughs> <laughs> I had one other girl in New Zealand, a little girl, Donna Hilton. Mm. Broke my toes three times, and um, uh, uh, but a very focused, determined, driven, but not very talented. But yeah. man, she made up for it with all this drive and focus. Whereas yeah. Christiane was, she's very gifted, probably the most gifted athlete in judo that I've ever worked with. And then there was the focus <laughs> and the drive. So, so it was there was a lot of things that was easy yep. in terms of that, except for that stubborn streak that she's got and that. Wait, you're stubborn? Didn't hear that before come up today. <laughs> Do you know what he used to always tell me, right? When he met me, he's like, I hate, he hated that. I always went, why? Why? Like, why you want me to do that? And he's like, just just do as you're told. Like, <laughs> stop back chatting. I was like, I'm not back chatting. Like, why? Why do I have to go run? I get it, why from, a a <laughs> I get it from a coach perspective. Like, you want a client who is interested in understanding the process. Yeah. You also want a client just to be like, just to rip in. Just yeah. Do yeah, it's just like, just fucking do it. Well, it's in the early stages yeah. uh, because if you go into the science, science of it, then it's too boring. Mm. And so you just want them for the first couple of years, you just want them to, to do it mm. and you'll see what comes out of it. Then I do like people to ask me questions mm. and ask the things. So then when they're older, I can then start teaching them the, the reasons really, for it yeah. so that Hopefully, in the end, when they start teaching, then they'll, they'll understand the science and the details behind it. Mm. But in the beginning, you don't need to tell them, well, we're training the central nervous system mm. uh, and we're training the blood system and we're yeah. training the anaerobic system. And they're going, what the fuck are you talking about? I just don't, well, I just want to do judo. I just want to throw people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, she just want, and that was, of course, her thing says, well, why? I just want to throw people. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> So I what did. he's saying is just ask different questions, not why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need that fancy stuff. Just like yeah. <laughs> you're getting bigger muscles. Okay. Yeah, sweet. Done. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. And how was the Olympics? Oh man. For you? Um, I think we always talked about like the next Olympics. So we went into it that it was the experience. So yeah. it was walk out. What's it like? Like it's the biggest stage you'll ever be on. There'll be bright lights. Like and it's really surreal. Like. A lot of the A-grade tournaments are still very big and very fancy. Like there's one in Germany that um, if you make it to the final, there's a big setup on the stage like a castle and they open the castle doors and you walk out of the castle Damn. to like these fancy like songs. So there is, there's big tournaments, um, but it's really, it was weird. Like you come out of these like holding like doors down yeah. the bottom and someone escorts you and there's like a light and it's like you can't walk up until the light goes this color and your name's everywhere so it is like it's very surreal and weird and wow. so we talked about like you know you won't know what it's like until you get there yep. so just take it all in enjoy it and you know then when it's your turn at the next olympics none of this is new none of it's like you can really you're not yourself. distracted or like it's it's you've done it before mm. um so a little bit of that like for me is a little bit of regret like I, I took it as that that Olympics was just my stepping stone to the next Olympics. Right. Um, because like we talked about, you know, my goal was never to go to the Olympics. My goal was to, you know, to if not just medal, like I wanted to win. Um, and there's an Australian um, female that got a bronze in, was it 2000? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, for me, I was like, it's achievable. Mm -hmm. It's not just because I'm from Australia doesn't mean I can't win. Yeah. Um, so I do regret a little bit that I think I took it for granted that that was a stepping stone because mm. I burnt out in the next four years. I hated judo. I hated the politics and mm. um, I didn't even try and go to the next ones. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of regret there, but yeah, it was incredible. But I also like, I broke my wrist about a month before the Ooh. Olympics. I had like, um, like a fracture, not break, but I fractured my wrist and yep. um, I was just told, you know, don't tell anybody because if you're injured, you can't go. So, so we just strapped it off and oh, I did it at the training. They, the Aussies went to Japan and, yep. um, you know, they just beat the shit out of us. I got thrown into the wall and landed funny and hurt myself. <laughs> and, and yes, I strapped it up. And I literally, like I competed at the Olympics. Um, they took me straight from the venue to the hospital. There was a hospital in the village. Yep. And so yep. I went in, they gave me cortisone, put a cast on me, but they gave me a like half cast because I had the junior worlds um, like three, four weeks later. Oh, wow. So they're like, keep this cast on for two weeks and then take it off to the tournament and then go back to the hospital in Australia and get a cast on. So, <laughs> so like I was, I was like back in the gym, like two days after that I competed um, 
keeping my weight down and getting ready for the next for the juniors so I didn't get to come home and do the whole like parades and yeah. all of the cool shit that so all the Olympics get to do yeah. like so honestly it felt like a little bit surreal like mm. and um you know mum I used to go and see a sports psych for a little while because like cutting weight all the time and being a kid and mm. all the pressure and and there was a lot of politics like one of Patty's best mates um his athlete I we used to he used to send her up to train with me and then I used to go down and train with her and then like that all blew up because we ended up being in the same weight class yeah. so she was older than me and went to the Olympics prior but in the under 48s and I was 57 so I cut down to 52 and she came up to 52 and mm. we happened to clash and then there was all this drama because I ended up beating her to go to the Olympics and then he applied to be my coach touring with me and yeah, uh-huh. that was a, a whole mess um yeah so mum put me into a sports psych and like we talked I was like man I don't even feel like I went to the Olympics mm. like it's just another tournament because yep. it's like all right you've done that next, back into got, the gym you didn't get what's to, next you went straight to the next thing yeah there's no real opportunity to really soak yeah. in that moment and like honestly like my um reflection of judo is like I just felt like a bit of a pawn like I was mm. just like it wasn't it's it's not nice now like but I look back I have like a lot of really negative memories mm-hmm. because like there was one tournament I um I got injured before this tournament as well and um I was seeded for junior worlds it was my final junior worlds and I went in I was a little bit injured and like my coaches everybody before I left like I was living overseas at this time were like man you know you're gonna win like you know, I'd done really well at the Junior Worlds prior to that and I was seeded for this one. I'd had a really good lead up to it. I'd been placing or winning some pretty decent tournaments. Mm. And then I lost in like the second round to a country like like a that wasn't well known for judo. Mm. And it was like it was a crappy fight. Like I got pinned for a penalty and I just couldn't catch it. And I yeah. got a throw at the end but didn't get given a score for it. So I lost on like a penalty. Oh, right. And um, and then I was out. And so we got back and it was raining and my coach – the team coach made me go run laps for like 20 minutes in the rain and like I had an injured foot and I'm like trotting around the track in the rain like it was just judo was like back then I don't know what it's like now but I hated it by the time I left like just because of the politics and because of the like Patty never got to come away on any like tours with me like because they'd send some other coaches that weren't there for your best interest like you know like so it didn't end up becoming like it wasn't Mm. Was, there's a lot of like crappy memories as well as good stuff. Damn, that must have sucked not being able to have your your main coach. Your, well, yeah, like what's the point? You, what's that <laughs> yeah. And like the twelve months, like there was about a twelve month stint there where I was the only female on the team, and they were sending mm-hmm. a different coach as my coach, and he was the coach of my opposition instead of sending my coach. Like, yeah, which to wow. me makes no sense. Like, there's no other chicks on the team, so why wouldn't you send my coach with me? But um, yeah. That's frustrating. Yeah, it's a bit ridiculous. Politics. Politics. Yeah. It, when we go back to where we talked about planning, mm. when I met Christiane and we were we were setting the goals and the targets and things like this, uh, again, when we talked about that she was going to go to an Oceania Championships, say two years uh, later, and then go to a Junior Worlds and whatever, in my planning, uh, we had an Oceania Championships up in New Caledonia. Mm. So when she was about 12, I think, or 13, I took her up to New Caledonia, not that she could compete, so that she could actually see the level of the tournament, Mm. but we had training camps afterwards, Mm. and then she'd actually be on the training camp Mm. with the same people who were actually winning uh, the the tournament, and she'd Mm. get a feel for what they were like, And because then in another two years, she'd actually compete against them. Mm. So it then wasn't, it was like putting your toe into the water and testing it before you actually do that. So I had all of these little steps where we do that and the same when I took her with I was taking the team from I was the region the Oceania regional coach here and I was taking teams to uh, a world championships in Cairo mm. so Christiane came with me for that so that we trained in Germany and I took them training in Germany again where we where we were in in Frankfurt order and um and again so that she'd be part of the team in training mm. with these athletes from around around the Pacific Islands and she'd actually be on the mat out in the warm-up area training with them, mm. mixing amongst all the Olympic champions mm. and the world champions who were in this tournament. So she got a feel for that level of of tournament. Um, and I, 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 
we even tried to sneak around the team. We were having a team yeah, event team and I tried event. to sneak around the, on the team. <laughs> there was no lightweights. We're like, we'll give it a try. <laughs> so <laughs> to give it a, couple a little, of years a little yeah. field. So everything that I did had a, a reason why I did it in a yeah. plan. Mm. And then when it came to the Olympics, again, she was right in that. Our plan was that she just go to the Olympics. Because she'd come fifth in the previous junior worlds, and she was going to do the junior worlds in the same year as the Olympics. We said, no, don't do anymore. Um, there's only the Olympics on in that particular year. Um, but in, at that time, the idea was that she would do my training plan. And unfortunately, I had to release her from my plan so that the national body would do what they wanted to do, mm. which just wasn't things. There was all about the Olympics, whereas mine was about just doing the Olympics, get off, come back, do some training and then compete in the world championships mm. and medal in the world championships. Mm. And I think if we'd followed my plan, that would have happened, but they didn't have deviated because it was the Olympics and, mm. and it was the national body take over and do what they do. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was all totally focused on Christiane at the time. Yeah. Um, and so she did, yes, and she got injured and it wasn't mm. the best experience, but in the Olympics uh, and then all of the stuff that came about where she then didn't train as much as I wanted her to for the junior Mm. for the junior worlds and if we'd done the stuff that i think my planning i am pretty convinced that she would have actually competed better but mm. yeah just other things that went on where the people who went there and were the manager and the coach and didn't look after her and mm. yeah, just some some not good uh, situations did, still did very well and then there's this making the athletes go running because they lost yeah. yeah, that's a very old school mentality. Mm. Not a lot of learning there, I don't no. think. Mm. <laughs> Not, well, yeah, I think it's, <laughs> it's a lot of hurting. Yeah. <laughs> Was the sports psych successful for you? Um, again, I actually found one that I found incredible yeah. Um, yeah. overseas. Okay. Um, the one that I saw here, um, See, I, I like was young and dumb yeah. and like she was extremely skinny and told me I had an eating disorder and I was like, ah, not listening to you yeah <laughs> um but yeah i found one it's it's, it's a personal thing isn't it you yeah. you find ones that work well with you and you find ones that don't and it's a waste of time so you just got to shop around i feel like it's again it's part of that whole industry of strength conditioning sport itself where it's it's a young industry in australia as well that's getting traction now like i've worked with sports sites before but it's like yeah it's not quite at the level that we i found overseas yeah as well yeah um but i mean they are very yeah. useful mm. yeah i think it's just again as you said finding one that will really connect with yourself mm. so there's now a mma in your life now not judo yeah so i um crossed over and started doing some bjj and mma mm. um does but that hurt you patty yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you feel <laughs> about that <laughs> the he purity says that. Of, he still comes the, and watches the purity of judo is yeah. slowly somewhere else yeah. no i love like honestly like it's hard to walk away from it and i yeah. think i'm at that point now like i've got two kids and i've just taken the last eight months off i fought last year and it was mm. it wasn't great like i wasn't i was i was pretty sick and just stressed like just falling behind in uni falling yeah. behind at training and feeling like i was falling behind as a parent yep. and then you know went and fought anyway because i i hate making a commitment and not mm. following through i shouldn't have fought yep. um didn't do very well and then i've just taken the rest of the t the rest of the eight months that i had left of mm. uni i took it off i'm just training when i can yep. at the gym and enjoying it rather yep. than mm. having a goal um but i feel like i'm at that point now like with well, martial arts yeah yeah i thought that was yeah. coming i was a bit nervous um i like i watched so many athletes like when i was a kid that just couldn't walk away mm. and i feel like martial arts like i'm sure i don't i can't speak for other sports but in martial arts i feel like it's not a sport that when you get to the point where you can't commit to it anymore you really need to walk away because it's dangerous mm. you're getting punched yes. in the head you're getting choked <laughs> out all the time like you can't train half assed and then go and fight and then not get injured or like be not not doing damage to your body yeah yeah there's variables you can't control yeah. of another human being it's yeah it's not like a sport like where powerlifting you may not train as hard you may mm. take time off yeah but we can still control the necessary yeah. variables like mm. not put as much weight on the bar yeah, yeah whereas you can't control someone trying to rip uh, your fucking yeah, head off yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i just much. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of athletes that just can't walk away because you mm. love it and mm -hmm. you walk away and you're watching other people do well and it's just hard to let go of. And I feel like I'm at that point where I just, I 
I walk away and I'm watching other people and I don't, I've got FOMO. Like I just, I want to be there and I Mm. love it. And I love the training more than any other sport I've gone and trained in. Mm. Um, But yeah, I don't want to be that person that's like, you know, I was good and now I'm just getting beat up all the time and Mm. I don't want to leave that. Yeah. So I I do, I do love it and I'm not sure that I'm finished, but Mm. yeah, I'm probably towards the end of my career and. Right, we'll, we'll have the soft suit ready. The gear wouldn't get too dusty. I'm sure you'd still throw it around every now and then. <laughs> yeah, no. I've trained with mom and I'm like, man, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> that shit's heavy. <laughs> She's like, you're not squatting low well enough. I'm out. <laughs> like, My up, legs mom. don't bend like that. <laughs> I've been contorted for so many years, mom. <laughs> you don't get it. I can't get down. I'm not coming back up. That's fair. That's a half a sport. I did, um, by the way, I did tell Patty last night. I said, oh, are you nervous to come today? And he goes, why? I was like, because I'm going to dish out all your embarrassing stories. So. Yeah, well, you got to give I us feel at like least we've one. been very serious. So, like, I'm trying to think of some of the good ones. Well, we actually have 10 questions now. Oh, great. That are so random. Mm-hmm. And Go, yeah. Yeah, these are like, honestly, yeah. they started off short, sharp, like first thing that came to your mind. But now Johnny's brains has taken over and they're some of the most, like, Oh, he's <laughs> had her. He's showing you. That was oh, his, that was the bet he lost. <laughs> Way back in the early when we were talking about uh, uh, making uh, um, bets. Yeah. And I lost all the bets. Yeah. But this is the one that I lost the most. <laughs> and it was better. It was, was it the first, the, first, the Oceana, the first Oceana that was in the qualification anyway, for the Olympics. Yeah. We made the bet that she wouldn't win the Oceania Championships, and I went, no, no, you won't win this one. Win, the, uh, win juniors, you won't win seniors. So. Yeah. She goes away, only a young kid, writes it all down, laminates it, gets me to sign it. <laughs> really? Laminates it so that I couldn't tear it up. Yep. And goes and wins the Oceania Championships. Brings it back. And brings it back and says, you have to get the tattoo. I love tattoos, but I never put one on me. Yep. Love them. Absolutely love them. And having living up in Samoa where they do them yeah. all with that stupid contraption they yep. do and you watch them do that and it's so painful. Yep. Anyway, else. Like 10 years later, he finally got it. <laughs> Took me 10 years to get it. That was so stupid. This is more painful. That, that really here. hurts in there, bro. <laughs> don't tell him that. I don't find that. He doesn't need any more. Oh, I've got another good one. One more, one more. When I went to a tournament when I was young and I like came away, I had like two black eyes and like these little scratches. I got like scratched down my face. I had like these perfect scratch marks down my cheek and we're sitting at the airport like sitting next to each other at the airport waiting to come home and I was watching this like old lady sitting across from me and she like elbowed her husband and she's like pointing at me like this and I'm like what is she looking at I was like quite young and yeah. then I worked out I'm sitting next to this bald you know mean looking dude over here and I'm like kid with black eyes yeah. and, I, and I went wait Patty she thinks she beat me up and she goes don't say that and I was like oh Oh, like, <laughs> this chick nearly fell off her chair and she's like, husband, like. <laughs> You're a shit. Oh, my God. Oh, like, she was a shit. Yeah. I yeah. went to a restaurant once and I'm cutting weight and he's, I was like, am I allowed something to eat? I knew I wasn't me. allowed to eat. And he goes, no, like, you can't eat. Like, and the waitress is like, oh, she's like, do you want to drink? Do you want to drink a water? And I was like, can I please have some water, Patty? And he was like, no. And he's like. <laughs> She's like, you're shizzing this chick's face. And she came back with like a bottle of water. And she's like, if you need some water, honey, it's just here. And I was like, thank you. This is one of the nice, in one of the nicest restaurants in Sydney that we could go to. And she had to lose weight just till the next morning. Yep. And she makes me out to be an absolute bastard that I'd starve her and not give her anything. Man, if that was me, I would just be like, if I'm in Patty's shoes, I'm like, she's cutting weight. She's cutting weight. We've got a tournament tomorrow. I love, oh man, that gives me like. And this woman was looking at me thinking, oh, big bastard. (laughs) And then meanwhile, he's eaten with his best mate. They've got steak and all these like fancy, like big (laughs) steak and veggies. And I'm like, I can't eat that water. I didn't have a veggie. (laughs) All right. We have. We'll go. Patty answers first, then Christiane. Patty, you're Neo in the Matrix. You can have the red red pill and find out the truth, (laughs) or the blue pill and not know. What do you want? Blue. Blue pill. Wait, what do I want to know the truth you, to? Like the everything. Ma- have you seen the Matrix? Oh, no. Oh, that well. could be tricky. It's on TV the other night. Um, <laughs> no, no, I don't want to know the truth. I don't want to know the truth. Yeah, no. Patty, favorite thing to eat for lunch? 
uh, egg benedict. Oh, as well as for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, in dinner. As well as for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and I do make a mean egg benedict. We'll hold you to yeah. that. We'll get you to sign it and laminate it. <laughs> yeah, make it for us. <laughs> yeah. uh, anything I didn't have to make myself. <laughs> That's oh, she is a dustbin. Yeah, she yeah is I like a dustbin. <laughs> what movie setting would you like to live in? Movie setting? Yeah, Harry Potter. <laughs> no, it's Star Trek. No Please. Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. Um, Karate Kid or wow. Rocky? Put yeah. me in Rocky. Yeah. Yeah, Rocky's yeah. good. One. Best advice you've been given? <laughs> Sit up with your back straight and don't talk. <laughs> like because I talk too much Who and I get myself into advice? trouble. <laughs> so it was good advice. Who Shut gave up. It to you? Oh, my old man, because oh. he clipped me around the head of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was always slouching while I was slurping food because there were so many kids in my family. Mm. If you were last in, you were never going to get fed. My brother was an absolute vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so I used to sit around and hump over it and eat my food in case he stole it. Yep. Best advice you've been given? She's like sifting through. Oh, my God. Life. Yeah. No, I've had some good ones. Um,. I'm I'm gonna go here only because we've been talking about sport and stuff. Um, and I had this conversation recently with somebody. Some Patty told me when I was a kid, he's like, you know, as a coach, my goal is to teach you everything I know that at some point that we need to go and find someone else that can teach you something that I can't. And I think you can kind of take that into like most areas in your mm. life, like take what you can and then you know, you outgrow things and mm. yeah, I think that's pretty cool. What question would you like to ask your pet? My pet. Do you have a pet? No. If you had a pet, what would no, you like to ask? Rock. What would you like to ask your rock? <laughs> Go find me a nice woman. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You're in all sorts of trouble with rocks looking for it. Um oh, why my dog keeps freaking yapping. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Would you rather eat a cake or a pie? Or oh, pie. Pie. Fuck, I want a pie now. Love a chicken pie. Chicken pie, pie. yes. <laughs> Chicken veggie pie. So good. Uh, steak. Steak pie. Steak and steak, mushroom. Steak and mushroom. Steak and mushroom. Oh, yeah. Steak, mushroom, gravy, like done. Mm. Oh. What board or card game are you incredible at? <gasps> Actually, I'm Not chess. really bad at <laughs> all of the. Oh, bugger off you. I won. She beat just me in so chess the other night because he got jumped anyway, up celebrating that she, he just she, beat she, me and he, like, he didn't kill us. Asshole shit. And board game. I, I actually, when I was a kid uh, and we were in Belgium for the Junior European Championships, I only had about 40 pounds, which is Irish pounds at that time was a lot of money. And I lost around the first night in card games. So I just don't fucking play card games because I'm shit at them. Mm. Yeah. That's okay. I'll play with a two year old. Yep. And so I have a chance. Yeah, he tries with Finley. And she, I try with she, Finley, but she's still. Two minutes me in, up. she starts throwing stuff and just fights you. Yeah. Finley's just like the mother. Feral. She's feral. Psycho. <laughs> card game or board game? Um. All of them. You're good at all of them. Yeah, thank you. Or the mother. Yeah. Just... We're always on the same team because otherwise no one will play with us. It, it's like Neo in the things. Or they can talk to each other um, without actually. Pictionary. <laughs> Mum and I rule at Pictionary. Oh, you don't play them with that. With the <laughs> Next tattoo. Any plans? <laughs> Uh, no, and it won't be on my arse either, <laughs> unless I'm dead. Hang on, guys. We got I got two kids coming up. We'll I'll, uh, we'll get him tattooed. Yeah, we got some bets coming up. Don't worry. Good, good. What's your next tattoo? Oh God. Um, I don't know. I got some spaces to fill up. Still got some room there. Yeah, yeah. I don't really have anything in particular. I just got to fill some gaps. Favorite pizza? Oh, pepperoni. Yeah, pepperoni. Oh, yeah. Pepperoni. Yeah. Um, you got one week to live, Patty. What are you doing? Don't go. Leave the pet rock. Well, I, I, hopefully not with the pet rock. Like to meet as many women as I possibly could. <laughs> with, with or without your pet rock. It's <laughs> like good answer. Yeah. Christy? Um, I don't know. I just empty the bank and take my kids wherever they want to go. <laughs> Disneyland. Yeah. Just hang out with my kids. My kids are cool. Do something fun. It's a really good, yeah. Hmm. That's nice. See, all my kids are gone. Yep. This is my kid. <laughs> yeah, and, she's, and you're like, I can leave already. Come <laughs> on. We went, we just had dinner the other night. I took the kids over and he 
Chicken. Eggs Benedict? Like, no, chicken. Oh, chicken. No, chicken. I was offered eight camels for oh. a rocket when we were in um, Abu Dhabi. We were traveling no, to Abu Dhabi and we were walking Egypt. around all the shops. And this guy came running out um, and offered me six camels. And I went, no, 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 no. And then seven camels and eight camels. That's my best he offer. He started considering so, it. Uh, everybody used to think, because we traveled together a lot, when she was younger thought that i was her dad yeah and, uh, and they were always talking about as if i was her dad but then this guy yes in abu dhabi decided to come out and talk to the dad and offer me eight camels <laughs> he looked me up and down he was considering it. <laughs> it's trying to work out that's eight camels. camels yeah was eight camels in a australia a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of cash for camels in uh, abu dhabi <laughs> yeah right wow. i've never i've never eaten camel i've yeah. eaten crocodile and all yeah. that stuff but where was your limit camel? though was it like 10 camels and she was gone he well, was, was considering it at eight i saw him it was true eight was like, i just fun. wasn't sure how, how many I'd weeks get them i got left australia yeah, yeah that's fair <laughs> and that's then did, really he, did he, he have to share those camels with my mom so she wouldn't kill him yeah so yeah yeah it didn't work out a big deal mm. no in the end not half and half or mm. maybe less than that for me uh, yeah no, it just wasn't worth the and her mother would kill me anyway she'd beat the crap out of me yeah, true <laughs> she's a lot stronger than most humans so. yeah. mm. but guys we can't thank you enough for giving us your time this morning is this morning so no, we're in the afternoon, in the afternoon now <laughs> so um but where can people find out more about either patty coaching christiane about yourself they have any questions where's your club uh, my judo club is in Wavell Heights in Cressy Street. Yeah. Uh, there's a great That's big uh, uh, karate club uh, mm -hmm. there. And we have the dojo, our dojo upstairs. And then the karate is downstairs. Yeah, sweet. Brisbane um, Judo and Institute. And we're there most days. Uh, but they need to call me 0417-277-544. Also, if you have women out there. Yeah. And, and, and if you're, and if you're cute women. on Patty and you think and you're and single, then, he's very available. Uh, <laughs> and we teach kids from uh, five and six to adults. Yeah, wow. Also awesome. cool. Legend. I'll put that all in the show notes for sure. Thank yeah. you so much for having us as no. well. Where do we find Christiane for Christiane questions? She avoided that. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. saw that. Like, yeah. I yeah. You find her at uh, Patty, I love uh, how, Patty's like, mobile number. <laughs> we were on the same page. Yeah, thank we you. You just threw me and under then the bus. Jane is just like, uh, John is just like, oh, that Yeah. Right. <laughs> Lovely. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks.